In order to address potential uncertainties, the Affordable Care Act baked in a trio of risk-spreading mechanisms, one of those being the Risk Corridors Program. The intent of this program, based on a similar Medicare Part D program, is to stabilize pricing should premiums not match outlays. You can call it financial experience-based safety net. Risk Corridor is one of the three mechanisms of risk stabilization program of Affordable Care Act, with the other two being a reinsurance and the risk adjustment. Uh, the goal of Risk Corridor's program was to uh, protect the insurer from pricing, from the uncertainty when pricing for the new risk pool. If the insurer is offering policies on the exchanges and later incurs uh, substantial losses due to high claims costs, the government will partly reimburse the insurance company for the losses. In order to do that, the Center for Medicare Services, CMS, will collect the funds from companies with low risk corridor scores and redistribute it to companies with high risk corridor score, smoothing out the overall results. I briefly mentioned the mechanism for, for the risk corridor payments. However, since the financial results of the exchange market is not a zero-sum game, it is possible that CMS will owe more to companies with high-risk corridor scores that it will be able to collect from the companies with a low-risk corridor score. In this situation, there will not be enough funds to pay for risk corridors. What happened in December 2014, the Budget Act explicitly prohibits the CMS to use taxpayer funds to pay for risk corridors. Suddenly, insurance companies found themselves in a situation where the collectability of the risk corridor payments is under question. And by that time, by December 2014, a lot of insurance companies already accumulated very significant receivables for their risk corridors. Accounting rules that were finalized prior to the Budget Act of December 2014 allowed risk corridor payments to be fully admitted. Some carriers, however, made a decision not to do it due to doubts about the collectability of these funds. However, at the same time, the majority of health insurance companies followed the rule and admitted their risk corridor receivable uh, for year-end 2014. They were in no position to bypass on these payments because the amount of risk corridor receivable was very significant compared to their capital and surplus, and if they didn't record this receivable, their financials will look very weak. By law, risk order payments are not scheduled to expire until 2017. However, what we've been seeing and hearing that with everything that's been going on around risk order payments and the doubts about the collectability of these payments, insurers didn't include risk corridors when they were calculating their rates for 2015. The companies just didn't want to take the risk of pricing low and later not be able to collect the risk corridor payments. Recently, CBO revised the estimates for Affordable Care Act enrollment and cost. According to this estimate, the average cost of increase per enrollee will be only 5.6% per year for the next 10 years, which is significantly lower than the previous analysis showed. However, at the same time, CBO stresses that the premium increases over the same period of time will outpace the increase in cost. And the reason for that, the health insurance will have to price in the phase out of risk stabilization program in 2016 in 2017. But we've been seeing that a lot of carers uh, already um, did, did not include potential risk corridor payments in their, in their pricing for 2015 therefore smoothing out the uh, premium increases that are uh, expected. We'd like to thank AMBES for their contribution to our program. If you'd like to see more of the First Monday series, visit the AMBES website.